Hi, welcome to this video about Object Manager Advanced version 15, the latest release of IDIN's super cool development tool. Object Manager Advanced has been the leading development tool over the last 10 years. With the new release of OMA 15, another set of cool features and improvements has been added to the product. In this short video, I will talk you through an overview of these improvements. So here we go. The biggest change, as you can read in this what's new PDF file, is the fact that OMA now uses the syntax tree algorithm to analyze code. And in this way, it improves the way that OMA can parse your source code, and therefore it will optimize the way used analysis, guideline checks, and so on. And it has a very positive effect on the tool's performance. So check it out. Guideline checks. As you may very well know, OMA has always had the ability to analyze your code in CAL and AL, for that matter, and a few little features in the guideline checks have been added. And I will take you through a little demo of a few of them. As you can see here in this example, it is very well possible by making not so obvious mistakes since the compiler will not notice it at all. But these type of errors happen quite a lot in existing CAL code. And OMA is able to find them easily. I will show you a very short demonstration of this. So we go to the application and I'll take you to the analysis tools and the guideline checks. And we add an object to check, table 272 in this example, and we do check. As you can see, Object Manager has found some comments and by running the code, it will take you exactly to the example that's shown in the picture where it finds obsolete statements like this. Obviously, it should have used the bank account ledger entry record type rather than the field name itself. So another example of added guidelines is the handling of suspicious case statements. And also there, I have an example of that in the standard application. So if we add another object table 420 in this example, and we run the check, it also finds a problem. And if we look at the problem more directly, then you can see here that the checking of the option source type concerns journals, sales documents, and purchase documents. However, the purchase document source type has not explicitly been written out. So it might have been an else or explicitly mention the purchase type of source. So also in this case, it could be a typo of some kind or just a simple mistake. In both cases, OMA will automatically recognize it and guide you through handling this kind of problems. Another example as shown in the PDF is the use of obsolete fields and elements. So as you can see, obsolete, you may well know that fields and elements can be marked as obsolete in future versions. And OMA will recognize those. If we jump to the application again, here, and we add a reference to table 130. And we run the check again. It finds a bunch of problems. But one of them has to do with 
pending obsolescence. So the URL fields 2, 3, and 4 are in future versions to be deleted. And OMAP just triggers the fact and shows you the fact that these fields are still in use. So you may want to act on that immediately change the code so you get compatible for future versions. It's up to you, of course, but OMA is very capable of detecting little issues like this. All right, back to the PDF again. The next topic I would like to tell you about is a number of improvements in the variable usage, both naming and the way they are treated in the code. As you can see here, unused variables are already part of the existing product, but a few new types of usage are being triggered uh, by the tool and presented to you in the guideline checks. So unused parameter, for example, or uninitialized variables. The check on if the name of a return value is used as such, or is it just using exits as is? So in both cases, a lot of obsolete usage is detected and acted upon. Next topic I would like to mention is the tooltips, which is kind of obligatory in the current applications, especially when you go to AL, is the fact that tooltips have to end with a period. So an extra check has been added to the tool to see if that is actually the case in your code. I also would like to mention, uh, it's not new in this version, it already is part of OMA 14 already, but it's worth mentioning again, as it's said here, you are able to write your own guideline checks because there is functions you can subscribe to and you can just implement pieces of code. Let's make it a little bit bigger to handle specific um, guideline checks of your need. Right, next. And that has to do with projects and transports. Projects have now the ability, as you can see here, this is a project card, and I'll take you to the application in a moment, but it is now possible to specify on a certain project that a new license is required should this project be shipped to your target systems, for example, your customers. So if you have added objects, added tables or, or something like that, then it's possible to specify the fact that a project can only ship if a new FLF is attached to the project in order for you not to forget the fact that a new license is required due to new objects. can easily show that in the application here. If we go to projects, as you may know, it is possible to add documents to a project, but specifically this Boolean here marks the fact that as explicitly a FLF is needed for this project. Right, um, another new feature is the fact that you can work with branches in Object Manager. I'll show you in the application here. Branches are part of Source Control main menu. And should you work with branches, basically groups of objects that, that belong to each other, uh, then you can specify branches and inside a branch may be a list of objects. In my example, this branch is containing two table objects and in a project, it is possible to add a branch rather than manually selecting the objects yourself. So if you just select your branch here and you press OK, then the contents of the branch 
specifying the two objects mentioned are automatically added to your project. Very cool feature. Most people are not really aware of uh, the existence of um, uh, branches, but it can be very useful to use in um, object grouping. Next topic that I would like to mention here, the fact that you can add null objects. And what, what we mean by that is that it's possible to specify an object as a null object on a project. And the purpose is to delete the specific objects when importing the project on a, a customer installation. So in, it's basically the other way around of releasing objects. You can then specify that objects will be removed on the receiving side. Another part of OMA for the last few years is the ability to work with CAL to AL converters. And also in that area, a few new features have been added to the product. So for example, you can already create table extensions based on your modified objects. If I enlarge the screen a little bit, you can have, for example, uh, table 50,000, in previous examples, I've shown uh, the fact that OMA can automatically detect uh, changes that have been added to standard objects and additional table and page objects that have been added to the product. And now you can not only create the objects and extensions automatically in an AL appearance, but you can also use transfer data actions to make sure that not only the objects are created into AL files, but also a script to transfer the data from your existing CAL solution into an AL solution after the conversion. So very useful, not only about the objects and functionality itself, but also about the underlying uh, data. A new additional feature of the conversion is the fact that OMA can auto-generate tooltips. And as you may know, tooltips are mandatory in actions and controls. And therefore, if a tooltip is not available, OMA will create one for you based on the fact. In this example here, it automatically detects the fact the property of a page is to either view or edit whatever permissions. And then tooltip will be generated like specifies the status code of the project or view or edit project permissions. So if you check out the code, it's kind of default behavior to make sure at least the obligatory tooltip is present in the product. Another part of the converter is the fact that it can remove with statements. In cloud development, it will be no longer possible to use the with clause so in the example down here, you can see that this is kind of normal code from a CAL perspective, but it during conversion, it will now be changed into removal of the with clause, as you can see here, and explicitly mentioning the table object name instead. So the code will basically look like this. And now after conversion, it will changed into this structure. Another cool example is the fact that, as you can see here, this has been pretty normal code for versions, but in future versions, the rec will be obligatory. So before OMA 15, the situation would be looking like this and in the new converted AL file, it will now explicitly mention the reg dot in order for you to get a compiling result. Also very cool, and it saves a lot of manual repairing of uh, the uh, results after the conversion. Of course, guideline checks can be specified during conversion to make sure that, and you can select the guideline check you want to apply during conversion, but it can then 
using this button, apply converter actions automatically to your target files. Next is the fact that the same functionality is also present in the Navgate editor. Navgate, as you know, is a different way of editing code inside OMA with a completely home-written cool editor already there for many years, but now also these kind of new features have been added to that tool as well, making it possible to work with Navgate in a similar way as you use working with CAL and Visual Studio Code. Right, last but not least is what I would like to mention. It is now possible to combine running tables and editing table data on tables that have extensions. So suppose you have an extension on your customer table 18 uh, being um, table 50,000 extending table 18. Then if you run your base table, it will create a page and make sure that not only the base fields are present in your editing uh, window, but also parts of uh, the fields that belong to the extension of uh, the table. So it's all in one go. You have your base fields on one side and additionally you have access to the fields that are part of your extension. In my opinion, very cool, very cool feature. Last topic, eventually the translation tool. Translation in AL, as you may know, there's the existence of Xlifs, which is basically an XML file containing all your multi-language captions. The translation tool inside OMA is now capable of importing and exporting Xlifs automatically. So you can then use Object Manager Advanced to do your translation work and eventually produce an XLIF file in your Visual Studio Code project. So you have your result on the other side. Feel free to read this PDF file completely. Uh, should you have any questions regarding all things in this tool, feel free to check out idin.nl or contact us through projects at idin.nl or if you have sales related things, please contact sales at idin.nl. For people not very familiar with OMA itself, check out the website as well, because it has, as mentioned before, for more than 10 years, it is the absolute necessary tool if you work with CAL and AL development. And with the release of OMA 15, the world is getting better and better over and over again. Thank you for watching and I hope you will enjoy the tool as much as I do. Bye bye.